Huo Wai just made one of the boldest moves in tech, again. But this time, it's not just about specs or flashy designs. It's a fight for survival on the global stage. And the Huawei Pura 80 Ultra, it might be their most ambitious weapon yet. But here's the thing, almost nobody outside China is talking about it. Welcome back, viewers. James here. If you love getting the inside scoop before it hits everyone else's feed, make sure to like, share, and subscribe for more. Now let's dive in. On paper, the Huawei Pura 80 Ultra sounds like it came from the future. We're talking a 1-inch 50MP main sensor. Yes, a full-inch sensor in a smartphone. That alone makes it a mobile photography beast. But Huawei didn't stop there. They added what's possibly the world's first dual-lens telephoto system on a phone. Two separate lenses. One for mid-zoom at 3.7x and another that pushes all the way to 9.4x without relying on digital cropping. Let that sink in for a second. Both lenses sit on a 50MP sensor with something called TCG Triple Real Time Fusion Tech. It boosts clarity, dynamic range, and depth in a way that feels like computational wizardry. Then throw in a 40MP ultra-wide camera plus a front-facing 4K selfie shooter, and you've got a device that technically stomps over most flagship cameras from Samsung and Apple. So with all this innovation, why is no one lining up to buy it? To understand that, we need to rewind just a bit. Remember when Hawaii was on top of the world? In 2018, they overtook Apple. By 2020, they beat Samsung to become the world's top smartphone seller. That's a position companies dream about. Huawei was shipping nearly 56 million phones in just one quarter. Then boom, everything changed. In 2019, the US government added Huawei to its infamous entity list. That banned US companies from doing business with them. No more Qualcomm chips. No more Google services. No Play Store. No Gmail. No YouTube. It was like pulling the oxygen out of Huawei's global growth engine overnight. And it hurt big time. Their global revenue dropped from 136.7 billion to mu 93.5 billion in two years. That's not just a dip. That's a nosedive. Some say it was politics. Others say it was protectionism. Officially, the US claimed Huawei was a national security threat, allegedly used by the Chinese government for surveillance. Was it true? No one really knows for sure, but it didn't matter because the damage was done. And here's where things get really interesting. Despite the ban, Huawei never stopped innovating. While everyone expected them to vanish, they quietly built their own OS, their own ecosystem, and even their own chipsets. The Pura 80 Ultra runs on the Kirin 9020, Huawei's in-house silicon. It's not as fast to come Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, but it works. Geekbench scores around 1200 for single core, 3600 for multi, 3D mark score about 1800 in raw numbers. It's not flagship material, but for Huawei, it's proof they're still in the game. And maybe, just maybe, they're playing a different one now. But here's the twist, Huawei's biggest challenge is in hardware, it's trust. Most people I talk to aren't worried about chipsets or Google apps. They're worried about what Huawei represents. For many outside China, it's still seen as the SPI phone brand. The one the US government warned us about. That stigma is hard to shake, and that's where the Pure 80 Ultra hits a wall. No matter how great the hardware is, and believe me, it's great. If people don't trust the brand, they won't buy the phone, period. Even if Huawei offered workarounds for Google Apps, which they do, or a slick app gallery experience S, which they have, the average user doesn't want to deal with any of it. They want to open a box, sign in, and start using their phone, not sideload apps or navigate questionable APK sites just to get YouTube running. Now let's talk about the market. In Europe, Huawei holds just 2.36% of smartphone market share globally, around 7%. Those numbers were in the double digits just a few years ago. The fall has been steep. But here's where it gets really wild. Back home in China, Huawei is thriving. Like, really thriving? I recently visited Shenzhen, Huawei's unofficial tech HQ, and it blew my mind. Huawei isn't just a phone brand there, it's an ecosystem. Smart homes, TVs, EVs, AI assistants, routers, wearables, tablets, you name it, Huawei has its hands in everything, and it shows. For the first time, in Huawei posted a massive 37% yo revenue increase in Q1 2025. That's fueled mostly by Mate 60 sales, which crushed it in China. It's a rebound no one expected, but now the question is, can they do it globally? And that brings us back to the Pure 80 Ultra. This phone is Huawei's global flag. It's the device they want people to talk about. It's the proof that they're still pushing boundaries. But without Google, without Snapdragon, and with a reputation that still makes people nervous, the odds are stacked high. Yet, here's the plot twist if you're a tech enthusiast, someone who loves experimenting, tinkering, and pushing the limits. The Pura 80 Ultra might be the most exciting phone of the year. It's different. It's bold. It dares to solve problems in new ways. The dual lens telephoto. No one else is doing that. The variable aperture. It's like DSLR controls in your pocket. The design pure premium. It even has one of the best in hand feels of any 2025 phone I've tested. But most people won't buy it. And maybe that's okay. Because Huawei isn't just chasing global dominance anymore. It's building a future-proof, self-sustaining ecosystem. In China, it already has a massive lead. 
Globally, it might only need to convince a small group of fans and creators to keep the brand relevant until the political winds shift. So is Huawei done? Far from it. Is the Pura 80 Ultra worth it? If you're looking for something truly different in a sea of sameness, and you're okay living without Google, it just might be. But until the world shifts its view of Huawei, most of us will be watching this comeback from the sidelines, wondering what could have been. And maybe, just maybe, hoping for one more miracle.